Hello and welcome to Black Desert. In this video, I will be offering some tips and tricks to new players entering Black Desert for the first time. So welcome to my ultimate new player guide for Black Desert Online. If you do find this video helpful and find yourself purchasing anything from Black Desert's cash shop, then please consider using my code upon purchase to help support me directly. And thank you to those who use my code. It helps a ton. But let's waste no time and get straight into what you need to know. Firstly, I'd like to start off by saying that this MMO is a marathon, and in the MMO genres, games like these are marathons and not sprints. So if you're looking to play short term, this game may not be for you, but this game is dramatically more casual friendly these days. If you'd like to see my honest review of Black Desert before continuing further, please feel free to check out this video here where I go over extensively on Black Desert's current condition. But for now, let's jump into Black Desert and catch you up on some things that you need to know. One of the first decisions you will have to make in the game is which class to choose, and there are a variety to choose from. The best advice I can give you for now is the same that I've given before in the past. Choose whatever looks cool, feels cool, plays cool, whatever. Choose something you think is awesome, and don't be afraid to try and fool around on other classes. You will be spending a lot of time in BDO, so make sure you put some time into finding a class that you enjoy. Everyone is good and all classes are the right choice as far as I'm concerned. So take time to choose what suits you and not seek the flavor of the month. If you're looking for the flavor of the month advice, you're watching the wrong video. After creating a character, you're going to be prompted to then select a server, but don't worry, choosing one honestly doesn't matter at all as you can freely swap servers at any time, and your server swap cooldown only lasts roughly 10 minutes. However, as a new player or returning player, it's well within your interest to choose the Season servers, and I'll explain why. The Season server is essentially a fast lane to the mid-game content existing in Black Desert. As a new player, you will want to play on these servers to progress faster. Much faster. Our character is created, we've chosen our server, but now from here we need to choose one of the three starting points. And if you want my advice and honest opinion, choose Ancient Stone Chamber. After a group discussion with other players, we all agree that Ancient Stone Chamber is by far the current best starting point. If you have an annoying friend that just started BDO, then tell them to choose the Land of the Morning Light quest line and thank me later. Do note, not choosing the other starting points does not affect your progress, and you will be able to visit this other content whenever you choose to, but Ancient Stone Chamber is the place to be and the place to start. Upon first entering Black Desert, there is a lot to do and a lot going on. So where do we start? Let's start up by loading up the main quest line and following it from here. You are going to want to progress through the main quest line and almost through all of it as you progress through this game, and I do recommend at least doing it once. Before continuing to quest, press O and make sure you have all quests selected or else all quests will not be shown to you by default. And fun fact, upon accepting a quest, once the path is visibly shown on your radar, you can press T to enable auto-pathing to a destination set, including a quest that you might be doing. Another fun fact, if you press F3 to open the cash shop and then select the loyalties tab, from here you will likely have access to 530% XP scrolls for one day's worth of logging in. Definitely collect these for more faster leveling up in the beginning and early game progression. Speaking of progression, let's talk about the progression pass. This pass here will require you to do simple tasks throughout BDO to get you more familiar with its world. Absolutely tack away at this for some extra goodies and rewards that will become handy in your adventure. The progression pass easily explains itself, so take a look over it and try to chip away at it as much as you can to make your way further into the world of Black Desert. Now, I've done a bit of sidetracking here, but I do think making note of all of this is important before you start embarking on BDO's long journey. And now focusing back on our season character, where we want to go from here is again following the main quest line while also chipping away at the season pass. The season pass is similar to the progression pass, honestly, completing certain tasks to get certain rewards that you can use for your progression. The good thing about the Season Pass, similar to the Progression Pass, is it will have you perform quests and tasks that are beneficial for your progression in Black Desert, as well as helping you understand more on the game, including unlocking your Awakening, Succession, as well as learning the basics of Enhancing. Both the Season Pass and Progression Pass give a lot of quality of life rewards, including at the end of Seasons, you get this awesome compass item that allows you to copy your character's level and paste it onto another new character of your choice, so you can essentially level up another character simply by leveling up your main and using this item once obtained. At this point, I've already given you a lot to do and many hours of things to focus on. 
But once finally done with the season servers and the season pass, it's very important to familiarize yourself with the NPC Jatina. Jatina is going to allow you to take your season gear and convert it to regular boss gear that you'll use on regular servers as well as in your progression out of season. Jatina is also going to have a variety of quests for leveling up your converted gear as well as offering you a quest line to achieve a pen accessory which is a daily quest line absolutely start this quest for the pen accessory with Jatina as soon as you can. The earlier, the better. I will make a more detailed guide on this, but for now, let's keep sticking with simple information, the basics, and what you need to know. So far, we're off to a great start, and you should have a lot on your plate to do now. But wait, yes, of course, there's more. The next and absolutely one of, if not the most important quest line you will need to follow is the Magnus. After completing the entire Magnus questline, which is very easy to do, you will have access to the fast travel system throughout the world of Black Desert, making traveling incredibly more convenient. Also to mention, you will unlock the global storage system, aka being able to access any storage in the world from any storage in the world. The global storage system accompanied by the fast travel system are fantastic rewards itself alone, but additionally, completing the Magnus questline will also reward you with a free piece of pen boss gear, aka actual endgame gear that you will use. Magnus needs to be at the top of your priority list when first starting BDO alongside the season and progression pass that I mentioned earlier. So here we are in the world of Black Desert and a long list of things to do. In this next section of the video, I'm going to be breaking down some other important things you'll need to pay attention to along the way. Please note, while I may not cover everything, my goal is also to provide you simple information that will give you a ton of things to do in the meantime. While traveling throughout BDO's vast world, you will meet many NPCs, and on your radar, these NPCs will be labeled as silver question marks. This simply means that you haven't met them, and I encourage you to interact with all silver question marks that you come across. This is going to increase your NPC knowledge, making them searchable in the NPC function, which is great for finding a storage keeper or a stable close by. Alongside the knowledge, your knowledge also rewards you additional energy for your overall energy pool. Your energy pool is used for any task that consumes energy, and typically this comes from life skilling. Chop a tree, consume energy. Pick some weeds, consume energy. Smoke the weeds. <coughs> oh, fuck. The good thing about your energy pool is each character has their own pool of energy to use, but all will share the same max amount of energy. Meaning, if my main character hits zero energy from life skilling, I can swap to another character to utilize their full pool of energy to continue my task. Alongside this basic info I'm giving to life skilling and energy, it will be important to set up a farm at some point. Farming is a fantastic way for passive money making. I definitely recommend looking for an NPC that will rent you a 10 plot fence. Alongside your farms, there are many ways to earn passive income, such as workers, which I will mention shortly. Traveling around BDO's world, you will unlock locations and some locations will be titled nodes. These nodes may have additional resource gathering attached to them if you click on the node from the world map. From here, we are able to send a worker to start gathering those materials. To keep workers simple, you'll select a town, you'll invest in some lodging in order to house your workers, you'll go to a worker manager to hire workers, and after hiring them, you can then send them to the node. I do have a guide on nodes and workers that was made years ago, but thankfully the information inside of it still remains very relevant. I recommend checking out this particular video to learn more on the worker and node system. Whether it's active gameplay or passive gameplay, you're going to make an in-game currency called silver, and this is the bread and butter of your progress. Your silver is going to be used towards all the gains that you will make. Your upgrades can be achieved one of two ways. You can effectively buy your gear off the marketplace, or you can take the route of enhancing and enhance your gear yourself. However, in most cases, this is a very unforgiving process for the majority of people. If you'd like to learn more about enhancing and how to properly do it, I also have an old guide that holds very relevant information that you can also check out here. And don't hesitate to use alt characters. As I've mentioned before, they are a great use of your energy pool for life skilling, but also do a great job hanging on to fail stacks that you may build up through enhancing. Now, if you're asking, what's a fail stack, then you definitely need to check out this guide. Pause the video. I'll be here when you get back. But before we get to our upgrades, let's get back to our silver. 
Outside of life skilling, you're also able to combat monsters around the world of Black Desert. The world map holds fantastic information about all of the grind spots and locations in the game, as well as providing information on any special drops that you may want to focus on. Good places to focus on early will be places where you can grind out the infinite HP potion, the infinite mana potion, and a wide variety of other treasure items that exist in Black Desert. But the potions will be the most important ones to focus on, especially in the early game. So definitely utilize the world map's UI to find out more about the grind spots that you visit. <laughs> when grinding, you'll come across a lot of trash loot that takes up a lot of weight. And fun fact, you can put an infinite amount of weight on your horse simply by taking off all of the loot from the horse first and then placing everything on the horse after. If you mess this up, you and your horse will be overweight and that's not a fun time. When finding a grind location of your choice, if it ever gets busy, you also have access to a private server to grind on, the Marnie's Realm. The Marnie's Realm is fantastic for any grind spot you go to that has a high volume of players. Simply select it to get yourself some private time and some peace and quiet in your grind. Throughout your grind, there are many things that are going to attribute your overall strength and power. Your gear being the most obvious one, but in fact there are additional items that you will need to know about to greatly increase your strength and all of this can be obtained in the early game. Crystals, a traditional mechanic across every MMO I've seen, I don't think I need to break this down too much, but definitely having crystals for additional stats is a big boost in strength. Additionally, the artifact system is another system to pay attention to. Essentially, think of these as additional crystal slots, except when you have a particular order of crystals slotted into your artifacts, you can also trigger set effects that award further statistics. And these are huge in PvE, PvP, and getting my t-shirt back from your mom's house. Got them. Artifacts are also obtainable in grind locations and other tasks throughout the game, but again, the world map and its UI is a great source of information to show you what drops where and where to get what. And lastly, to tack to your strength are the buffs, and buffs come in a variety of forms such as food, elixirs, scrolls, and even some NPCs that will require a small fee to give you long-lasting buffs to utilize. So now you're aware of where a lot of your strength can come from, but a lot of your money can come from loot scrolls. These are going to award additional drops, higher drop rate percentages, and affect your overall income per hour. Additionally, fun fact, if you hit P and make sure that you are on the battle stats page, at the very bottom, there is an item drop rate percentage here. This can hit a max cap of 300% on normal servers and can go up to 350% on Arsha servers. Definitely pay attention to this if you are proccing any of your bonus loot scrolls to make sure that you are not exceeding 300%. Anything past that will be a waste. With so many quests and so little time, it's sometimes hard to know where is the most important place to be putting our focus. That's why the adventure logs are also a great place to put our attention. If you're finding yourself done with everything I've mentioned earlier, adventure logs require simple tasks that eventually reward you with additional stats to your character. AP, DP, HP, Stamina, and one of my personal favorites, Agris Fever. The Book of Margahan is the book you want to focus on in order to unlock Agris feature. And this feature, when being used, also awards you with additional loot for your grind and is absolutely essential in top tier money making in the early game and end game. If you're looking to get ahead early, I would absolutely focus on this adventure log first. And finally, throughout the world of BDO, there are a variety of events and tasks to pay attention to and be aware of. From here, I will give you a short mentioning of those tasks. First up, we have the Black Shrine, the Boss Rush Blitz, a boss hunting game mode that is a 1v1 player versus boss type challenge mode. Players can select the difficulty, claim a reward afterwards, and this is a great simple task to do throughout the week. A player can complete five bosses a week it's very well worth doing, and fun fact, Black Shrine requires essentially no gear, so both new and endgame players can enjoy this content whenever. Next up, we have the dungeons. These reset weekly, have a simple dungeon to run through with a boss at the end, some nice mechanics to follow alongside needing a proper team to complete. The rewards for this are in a BDO fashion, so a lot of RNG is involved, but majority of the time this is well worth doing. After that, we have the Pit of Undying, a daily quest where a player can face a variety of mini-bosses attached with different mechanics. It's a great thing to work on daily for some decent rewards that eventually start adding up as you unlock your way into the higher levels. And lastly, we have the bosses that spawn throughout the world. 
rift bosses, which can spawn randomly at any time and will require you to head to a specific location, summon that boss, and kill it for easy rewards. World bosses, which will spawn at a scheduled time and set location, similar to world bosses and other MMOs you may be familiar with. Field bosses, which are nearly exactly the same as world bosses, spawn on a schedule at a set location. One important feature you may find useful overall is also optimizing your game, adjusting the overall settings, effect capacity, and shakiness of the camera, which I suggest adjusting in the video settings. Another helpful tip for you if this appeals to you will also be the edit UI feature, which allows you to completely reorganize your UI to however you see fit. Here's mine for example. One of the things that I highly suggest turning off are all of the notifications that pop up at the top of your screen. You can remove these by turning these settings off here. Before I get into more detail on Black Desert's cash shop, definitely make sure you are checking out the suggested quest tab in order to assist you in things that the cash shop provides. Pets especially. Completing all the suggested pet quests may remove the need for you to buy pets at all. Unlocking a fairy will be incredibly important in order to start unlocking the auto healing and auto buffing features, but for now, definitely make sure to get this started and completed. Inventory expansion is pretty straightforward. More inventory slots, definitely get these. And other important suggested quests are also the family inventory quest, ensuring that you've started the pen accessory quest that I mentioned earlier with Jatina. And potentially the most controversial suggestion that I have for you is the free-to-play tent, which can allow you to remote repair your gear and utilize a small portable shop that also offers additional buffs that you can cast on yourself. The reason why I say controversial is because I'm going to talk about BDO's cash shop next where I'm going to explain more. And at this point, if you are considering spending any money on the game in the cash shop, here are some important things that I would put my focus into. Yes. The tent is typically everyone's number one suggestion, but with how easy the free-to-play one is to upkeep, I personally think that this is actually one of the most overrated cash shop items. While I do have the cash shop one, you will probably hear 98% of players disagree with me, and chances are 98% of those people haven't a clue on how to use the free-to-play tent. But next up, we have the value pack. You can have a quick read on the statistics here and what it offers. Considered almost like a monthly subscription item to the game. Not required, but exceptional to have. Next is weight, one of the most important features of a character. The overall weight will affect how much you can carry, especially when you're grinding and making money. Weight is an essential feature to have. Inventory expansion, because having more space is handy. Pets, because picking up loot is essential in this game, but as I said, make sure you complete the suggested pet quest first before deciding if you need or want to spend more money on these. And lastly, our maids, an additional use to your weight. This will go hand in hand in off-putting trash loot from mobs or even placing items onto the marketplace without the use of an NPC from town. You'll be able to remotely access the marketplace from your storage through the use of these. Additionally, if you do pick up anything from the cash shop, please again consider using my code to help support my content and these videos that I make. A lot of effort goes into these videos, so thank you for your support if you do use my code. And lastly, let's talk about the information that you can obtain through Black Desert's community. Finding the right guild in game is a fantastic place to start, and if you take a look at Black Desert's world chat, there are always guilds looking for players of all shapes and sizes, including fresh and brand new accounts because they just want to help and I encourage you to explore these areas and help find a community for yourself. Additionally, you can also press G to open the guild page and scroll through the pages of guilds to help you find something that suits you. Other third-party tools and resources that are incredibly handy in the community is Garmoth.com, a fantastic website that surrounds everything BDO, gear builders, marketplace tracking, as well as user-friendly spreadsheet tools to track income per hour at grind spots in the game and public information about all grind spots in the game. A fantastic way to see what spots are the best during certain times and events. Another fantastic source of information is also BDO Foundry, a great site for guides, relevant information, and fantastic information for strategizing what you may want to focus on. But that's where I'm going to come to a close. There is a ton of information in this video, and overall, I hope it was more helpful than overwhelming. And if anything, now you have lots to do and lots to focus on. But once again, please don't forget to use my creator code in the cash shop for any of your in-game purchases and to help support my content if you pick anything up. Regardless, I do hope this video was helpful and enjoyable. If this was, then please consider leaving the video with a like and do share with anyone that may be new to the game if you found this helpful. But for some, farewell.
For others, I'll see you in game, and for the rest, I'll see you next time.